The sweeping hills of Help Macau, the name given to this part of the Biggersburg in northern KwaZulu-Natal by the Fuertrekkers, who had to literally help each other to get their wagons over these slopes. Tranquil as it appears today, Help Macau has been a crossroads of history. Help Macau is one of those sad lost villages in our history where armies marched to decide our destiny from the Battle of Blood River through to St. Juan and Lorks Drift and also in came the worst war of the lot, this terrible civil war, the Anglo-Boer War of 1899. And there again Help Macau came right into the forefront, a recognized strategic position, first taken by the Boers, then taken by the British, an absolute shuttlecock in the hands of the contending parties. Long known to the great hunters of the past, it was part of the route from the coast to Mozambique, and even as far north as the Zambezi. Ivory, the white gold of Africa, was a great money spinner in the mid-19th century. And many an enterprising young man set out to make his fortune with his rifle. The old ivory hunters were themselves a tremendous force in early Africa. And it is from Help Macau that many of the early map makers left to forge their way up to the green, greasy Limpopo and even beyond the smoke that thunders. Numbered among the great hunters and explorers was Robert Dubois. Mrs. Dubois talks about her husband's great uncle. He uh, went everywhere on foot just with his native bearers to, and at the age of 18 he walked right as far as Lorenzo Marx and from there he went through up into what was the, uh, later Rhodesia and now Zimbabwe and uh, he used to call it different towns from time to time to sell his trophies. When he died, he had expressed the wish before he died that he did not want to be buried in a conventional coffin, but to be wrapped in a wildebeest skin. And uh, according to family legend, that was done. Help Macau was the strongest strategic position on the frontier, commanding as it did the only possible route over the Biggersberg at this point. It was the obvious choice for military fortifications, and a single tree at the top of the Help Macar Hill marks the remains of the Help Macar Fort. In a post-war boom, Hangley's Hotel, derelict now, was a convivial spot, its rooms filled with talk and laughter. It became a popular place to relax and socialize. And if you couldn't get a bed at the hotel, this lodging house, more comfortable then than it looks now, was a welcome relief to travelers. Today's traveler, however, will have to look elsewhere for accommodation. Although a walk around just sensing the ghosts of its colorful past is a fascinating experience. Fascinating, too, is how this old windmill still creaks eerily. Once an active trading center, the old shops now stand empty, and you won't find much to buy. You'll also wait a long time for a letter at the post office just across the road. With a growing population, Help Macau became a senior magistracy with a fine house for the senior magistrate, Melmoth Osborne. It seems a pity that this example of Victorian architecture cannot be restored. Today, it quietly rots away in the police compound, facing a road once filled with passing traffic. There was great venture, there was gold in the hills, there was silver, there was lead. The mining men who made for Barberton and the Kamati came through that way. Prosperous little villages grew up, and great missions, the great missions of Gordon Memorial Mission near Pomeroy, and the Elands Kral, German missions, put their mark on the map along with the famous Rorke's Drift. The Dedekens were the first German family to establish a mission station in the area. 
Their descendants remain there to this day as part of a small German community. This church was built uh, by our parents and uh, by our ancestors in 1923. It took them three years to build this church. All the stone was carted from the top of the hill and from the Makonda hill. And during that period, uh, there were, there were the cattle, there was a cattle disease and they had no cattle to cart, so most of this was carted by a mule. Uta Dedekin's great-grandparents were witness to the exhausted retreat of the Zili Impis from Rourke's Drift. The Bantus came over the Makonda Hill from Rourke's Drift and they greeted them. They were so exhausted, uh, fighting for several days, fighting the red coats, that they couldn't lift an arm and went on. Today, these stirring events are only a memory. The sound of the wind turning the veins of this windmill is the only life here now. All those traces now being swallowed, we hope in time, along with the graves, the military graves, will be properly cared for and that the passing traveler and the passing tourist will perhaps through a small museum be given the chance of recognizing the crossroads for what they were, a place of destiny in the history of South Africa. <laughs>